What's up, I'm Ijema and welcome back to my channel. Today, I wanna to talk about documentation. I know it isn't the most glamorous topic I could be covering on this channel, but I think learning the skill of navigating and reading through documentation is probably one of the most underestimated by new software engineers. I actually asked people on Twitter if they had any tips, tricks, and advice, and some of y'all really came through. I'll link the thread down in the description box below so you can see all the advice that people left. It's a super helpful thread. I learned a lot through this process. If you have your own pieces of advice that you wanna share with other people, feel free to leave them down in the comment section below. I'm speaking from personal experience, but a lot of you guys could probably relate to the idea that the action of sifting through documentation can be overwhelming and oftentimes just plain confusing. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you the different stages that I find myself in while reading docs. And then within each stage, I'm gonna share with you some helpful tips that I either picked up when I first started reading documentation or after a couple of years of programming with JavaScript. Throughout this video, I'm gonna be using the MDN or the Mozilla Developer Network documentation as the main set of docs, but the concepts that I'm gonna be sharing in this video can be applied to any set of docs that you're using. So with all of that, let's establish what documentation is. So for a high level definition, documentation is written text that explains how a certain software is supposed to operate and how users can interact with that software. In theory, all the questions that you might have about the tech that you're learning or reading about through the documentation should be clearly answered. The most popular set of documentation for JavaScript is the MDN documentation. Though it isn't JavaScript's official set of documentation, since there is no official set of documentation for the language, it is the best when it comes to being well-maintained and having a lot of great and different resources. So if you're learning or using JavaScript, MDN is the way to go 100%. You might have heard that there is good documentation and bad documentation, but how do you know exactly which one you're dealing with? It's important to remember that this is people's opinion. If you find a certain set of docs to be helpful in the majority of situations that you find yourself in, then it's completely fine to say that that set of docs is good. But if you still want a concrete guide of what you should consider when looking at documentation to determine if it's good or bad, this is the following list that I personally use. The first thing that I look for is concise definitions and explanations. This is an absolute must. I feel like documentation shouldn't ramble or be too fluffy. The explanations or definitions for the methods, classes, objects, whatever I'm looking up should just be clear and straight to the point. Number two is helpful code blocks. The textual explanation of how a method should work is helpful, but seeing how you would actually use that method will help you understand using that method even more. So I always look for documentation that include code blocks. The third thing is having organized sections. The page should have a feeling of like flow where there should be an introduction, maybe a code block, and then maybe you'll have syntax definitions and then more advanced or detailed explanations. It shouldn't be jumbled or disorganized. It should feel like when you start reading, you should have a nice introduction. And by the end, you should have a full body understanding of how to use that certain feature that you looked up. The fourth thing is having memorable and expected file structure throughout the entire set of docs. Each page should follow the same structure from the last page, especially if they're covering similar topics, like maybe you're looking at array methods and each page for each method follows the same structure. The last thing that I consider is the code playground. This is a nice to have, it's definitely not a must, a lot of good documentation doesn't include it, but it's just nice to have a code playground within the docs so I don't have to make all these temporary changes when I'm first learning how to use a new method inside of my own application code. These are the things that I look for in documentation, but there's probably a ton more that other people look for when they're looking at what good documentation is versus bad documentation. And with that, I wanna share the first tip, which is to identify personal favorite sets of docs. The reason why I wanted to include this tip is because even though you might not be using that set of docs for the entire lifespan of your project, Projects, I think it's really good to identify parts of documentation that you really like. So when you start reading new sets of docs, or even when you start writing your own set of docs, you know what to expect, or you would know what you would want to read if you're reading your own set of docs. So my personal favorites include Moment.js because all the information is on the same page and they have like a nice little table of contents on the side. Some people would consider that to be a bad thing because it can be a lot of information on one page, but I personally like having the ability of just doing a command F and looking throughout the entire page. Another set of personal docs I love is Lodash because it does the same thing where all the information is on one page. But one thing that I particularly love about that set of docs is that if you try to search for a method or anything within the package that doesn't exist, the search bar is actually going to stop you. It's not going to allow you to type for something that isn't existing inside the docs, which is really nice. So the user knows early on that that method doesn't exist. 
So now that we got the definition out of the way, the first stage that I want to talk about is identify the situation that you're currently in. The same set of documentation can solve different situations that you might find yourself in. So it's important to identify which situation you're in before you start reading through the docs. Common situations include maybe you're learning a tool for the first time and you don't really know how to get started. There are typically get started buckets or tutorials that are included in documentation so you can ease your way into learning how to use that tech without having to be exposed to a lot of the details that are inside that documentation set. Let's say that you came across a new term or new function inside of your code base and you don't know exactly how to use it. You can always go to documentation and find a little bit more information on how to use that method. Or let's say that you're stuck on a bug or you probably misused a function or an unexpected outcome came from you using a method. You can go to the documentation to see how you're expected to use that method. The tip that I wanna share in this section is is use other sources. There are two situations in which I would actually recommend using complementary sources before reading the documentation. The first situation is if you're looking for product slash solution oriented sources. What this means to me is if you're trying to implement a new feature, for example, let's say that you wanna integrate the Stripe API into your React native application. I personally like going to Medium articles or watching YouTube videos for things that are feature oriented or product oriented or solution oriented. I find a lot of the times documentation doesn't really help guide you through feature implementation, rather it just provides details on how you would technically do that. Whereas articles and videos are much more guided in that sense. So the second situation is if you want bug slash blocker oriented sources. And what I mean by this is you're dealing with a bug or you're blocked with some sort of error and you're not exactly sure how you're supposed to get past it. I personally recommend using Stack Overflow in this case rather than going to the documentation. And because the documentation doesn't list all possible errors that could occur when you're misusing that certain feature, Stack Overflow is always your best bet because a lot of developers run into the same issue and they ask the same questions. So I always turn to Stack Overflow before going to the documentation if something isn't working as expected or I forgot a quick line within like using Git for example, Stack Overflow is always the best bet. Stage number two is finding documentation. As web development becomes more and more popular, there's going to be more documentation, more articles, more videos being generated about certain topics within web dev. This is great for expanding knowledge, but it can introduce a lot of noise as to where you should be pointing your attention. It's always good to rely on the official documentation for any language, but if you're dealing with a language that doesn't have official documentation, like JavaScript, I always recommend looking for documentation that fits the criteria that I mentioned before. It's clear and concise, it's easy to understand, has code blocks, and if you're lucky, it has a little code playground. So one tip that I want to share in this section is expect that the documentation is clear and easy to understand. When I first started reading documentation, I thought because it was hard to understand, it was hard to grasp, there was a lot of extra information that I wasn't doing that well as a software engineer. But in reality, looking back at those docs, they were just terribly written, disorganized, introducing a lot of extra information that was unnecessary, and it was just not that great and friendly for beginners. So I think as time has gone on, a lot of documentation has become a lot more clean, organized, and just better to consume as a first time beginner reader, but it's still very intimidating to read documentation for the first time. So I always recommend that you expect documentation to be clean and clear at whatever level that you're at. So if you're using JavaScript for the first time and you're walking through the getting started or beginners tutorials for the language, you should expect that that doc should be clear and easy to understand at your skill level. If it's all over the place, then we have a problem with that documentation. So we identify the situation that we're in, we found the right set of documentation, and now it's up to us to start getting familiarized with the site. Each set of documentation can be very different from the last. So my recommendation is find a set of official or well-organized documentation and stick with it as long as possible. This is just great for you to identify the structure of that documentation so you feel very comfortable navigating through it. If this is the first time that you're ever looking at documentation or even specifically MDM documentation, what I highly recommend is that you just click around and get a good sense and feel of how the docs are organized. So on the MDN site, you can see here that there are three dropdowns, but the first dropdown includes technology, which breaks down the entire site into the technologies that it covers. So it has HTML, CSS, JavaScript, HTTP, and a lot of other great information. 
So if we click on JavaScript, we're dropped directly into the overview page for all the information that's directly related to JavaScript. So on pages like this, what I highly recommend doing is read the overview and see which links are provided and click on each of those links, take a quick look at them and understand how they relate back to JavaScript. The great thing about MDN is that on the overview page, they also have different sections that I think are great introductions to the documentation. So let's say that you wanna work through some tutorials and you're a beginner, you have a couple of beginner tutorials that you can work with and it goes all the way up to advanced. Or let's say that you're done with tutorials, you're working on a project and you want more information about a specific method, you can go through the reference section and find the object that has the method that you're working with. Or let's say that you want more tools and resources, MDN provides a really comprehensive list of things that you can use that will aid you in your development process. The one thing that I wanna point out which may seem obvious to some people, but I remember when I first started off, I didn't really think to use it, is the search bar. It is a great way for you to look for a page without having to click through so many different links. You can also just use Google. You can search like an arrays method, add the keyword MDN, and then be taken directly to the MDN page. The one tip that I wanna share here is use a table of contents and click on links. The great thing about documentation that's well organized is that they break down pieces of information very nicely. You can see here on the left hand side, you see related topics. They break down the tutorials, again, for complete beginners, JavaScript guide, intermediate and advanced. And they also do the same thing for references and they break it down, for example, by functions. And then they have a nice list of topics that relate directly to functions. So if I wanted to learn more about arrow function expressions, I can click on this link and I can read more about arrow function expressions. On top of that, take advantage of links within each page. If you're reading an introduction paragraph and something doesn't make sense, but it has a link, this just invites you to click on that link and learn more about that thing that you didn't know too much about before. So when you go back to the original page, you now know what this entire sentence is saying. So for this line, I can say an arrow function expression is a syntactically compact alternative to a regular function expression. But I don't know exactly what a function expression is. So if I click on function expression, I'm taken to the page and now I can read on what a function expression is and better understand how it's different from an arrow function expression. The second drop down is the references and guides. Again, it's pretty much broken up to what we saw before by tutorials and references, but there are also other sections like developer guides and accessibility, which I think are really helpful to read through, especially as you become more used to using JavaScript and building out web applications. The last step that I wanna share is providing feedback and communicating with the authors and maintainers of the documentation that you're reading. A lot of open source documentation does a great job at allowing readers to directly communicate with maintainers. So here on the MDM site, you can see the feedback dropdown and then there's like a send feedback option. There's a page here that shows you the steps on how you can update the documentation and collaborate with other people who are also maintaining the docs. This might be an advanced tip, especially if you're a beginner just getting used to documentation or the MDN documentation. But just remember that this is always an option available to you. You can always reach out to the people who are updating and maintaining the documentation. So you have a say of how it's organized and how it reads for other people. So stage four, is reading through the documentation. So now that we've identified our situation, we found the right set of docs, and we even took a little gander throughout the documentation, it's now time to actually read the documentation. This process of finding the right docs can feel kind of tedious for a first time, and it feels like the answer should just be like available to you when you find the right page that has the information that you need. But a lot of the times, once you find the page that you actually need, you're greeted with a lot of dense information. So my tip here is, again, might seem obvious, but start from the top and read down. Documentation starts off very easy to consume at a very high level and then gets more technical and detailed towards the end. So here we have the documentation for iterators and generators. So here, the first couple sentences that we see actually don't explain what iterators and generators are. Instead, they provide context as to why iterators and generators would exist. And then we dive into the concept of iterators and generators. I think to people who are just getting started with iterators and generators, we probably want context and then a very high level explanation of what they are and what purpose they solve rather than getting into the technicalities of it all. As you scroll down the page, you'll start to see more and more information regarding iterators, you'll see lengthy code blocks, and if you scroll down to the very bottom of the page, you'll actually see advanced generators. So a rule of thumb is to not jump around the documentation if it's your first time reading through it. I highly recommend just going from the top all the way down to the bottom as you get more comfortable with the information that you're reading. If you're comfortable with the docs, feel free to jump around.
One thing that I want to talk about is syntax definitions and understanding how to read them. So here we have the splice methods documentation page. Down here, we have a section called syntax. And syntax will describe how we can use this method. This might seem kind of overwhelming and the MDM documentation is well aware of that. So they also provide a parameter section which will explain what this line means. But if you don't want to read through this block and you just want quick information, syntax definitions are very helpful. So this line is basically saying that I'm setting my variable array deleted items equal to whatever is returned from the arrays splice method. So array here isn't actually a variable. It's just saying that you would have an array object at that place, and then you would call splice. And here is where it kind of starts getting crazy. So here we're looking at the first parameter start. And since it doesn't have any square brackets around it, that means that it's a required parameter. It's not optional. The square bracket notation means that whatever is inside of it is considered optional. So if we look at the delete count, we see that it's inside a square bracket along with the comma. So that's basically saying that the comma and the delete count number doesn't have to be included inside of our splice method. The great thing about MDM documentation is that they'll tell you down below as well if it's optional or required. So here you see the optional flag and then further information on how you would want to use or understand delete count. Then right after delete count, you'll start to see item one and then item two and then dot, dot, dot. This is the notation that MDM came up with to tell users that they can pass in, in theory, an infinite amount of elements. They'll further explain what this means down below where they have item one, item two and dot, dot, dot and explain it. The last part that you also want to read into is the return value. The code block here is going to try its best to describe what is going to be returned from the splice method by the name of the variable. But if this isn't too clear to you, you can also just go down to the return value section and read what is going to be returned from the method. Another tip for this section is use the code playgrounds. MDM is great because it has code playgrounds we see here on the splice documentation. If we press run, we can actually run the code that's inside of here. So if I actually delete all of this and then I just try to print like hello world, it's just going to compile that JavaScript. So this is super helpful to test any quick code that you're reading about. If this environment is too restrictive, meaning that you want to play around with not only just the JavaScript, but also HTML and CSS, I highly recommend using other services like JS Fiddle or CodePen, since you can play around with all three languages. And the last tip that I want to share with you is that patience is key. You can't have the expectation that you're gonna read through documentation and understand everything about the language. Even if you read through it a couple of times, the purpose of documentation isn't for you to remember everything, rather it should act as a source of truth if you forget something. There's literally too many features that exist in JavaScript for a developer to remember. Documentation exists so developers can focus on solving problems rather than remembering technical implementation details. And that's it on documentation. I know I covered a lot of things in this video, but I hope you found some helpful tips and pieces of advice throughout the video. Again, if you have any tips or pieces of advice that you wanna share with other people, please leave that down in the comment section below, or you can let me know if you have any questions or comments about reading documentation. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more content. I'm also on Twitter where I just talk about a whole bunch of stuff. You can follow me, you can send me a DM. I love to chat with you guys. And with that being said, I'll see you all in the next video.